Do you ever get on social media and look around and you're like, what is with all of this judgment? Just judgy McJudge judge. I'm over it. I'm so over it. And I know that all of that judgment comes from a lack of security. That judgment comes from a lack of confidence. And so I want to talk about that with you today and actually give you some tips to help you flex your confidence muscle, just like you would flex a physical muscle. That's what we're going to cover today. Hey there, Bombshell. Welcome or welcome back to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle, and I'm super appreciative of you spending your minute, precious time with me and other bombshells today as we explore ways to become more bold, more brave, and unwaveringly confident in all that we do as professional women. Now, speaking of which, that is the topic at hand today. Do you ever get on social media and look around and you're like, what is with all of this judgment? Just judgy McJudge judge. I'm over it. I'm so over it. And I know that all of that judgment comes from a lack of security. That judgment comes from a lack of confidence. And so I want to talk about that with you today and actually give you some tips to help you flex your confidence muscle, just like you would flex a physical muscle. That's what we're going to cover today. Now, before we do that though, I want to fill you in on Jean. So um, I've, I've talked to you about Jean. She survived Super Typhoon Ray in the Philippines in December, and we have been asking for um, your help to help her rebuild her home in a way that is sustainable so that she can um, have a home that's safe for her family and that would withstand earthquakes or typhoons and that sort of thing. And you so generously have given. So first of all, Thank you so, so much. But I wanted to give you an update, whether you gave or you didn't give. She is in the process right now of building. So the architecture already went through and um, and, and now they're building. She sent me a picture of some of the footers that uh, they dug out. And it's, it's really an exciting time. And we're really looking forward to having her with a safe home over a roof over her head, which is great. So we will put some pictures of that in the show notes. If you go to amberhurdle.com forward slash podcast with an S and look for this episode, then um, we will be sure to share some of that. And and we'll probably share those in social media as well. So tune in for that. Okay. On to the topic. Let me pull up my notes. All righty, y'all. So I talked about confidence being like a muscle. And and if you want to go back and listen to um, the episode where I talked about women and confidence and and just some of the things, I don't want to say like the the deck stacked against us, but we do tend to have, um, you know, we have less testosterone than men. Our frontal cortex works differently than men. The way that we make decisions is different than men. And so we're not necessarily um, as confident as men inherently are. Now that's, you know, a broad stroke, that's not every single person, Um, people like me, you know, we have pretty healthy amounts of confidence, but even I, I mean, there's a a lot of things that I still struggle with. So I have to, I have to flex my muscle just like you do. So what I want to do today, just like if we were at the gym trying to flex our muscles, like, well, how do I, you know, how do I get rid of this Turkey arm or whatever, you know, you get on cardio and you do uh, dips and some tricep extensions. Well, I want to give you a prescription today or a workout today of what you can do to improve your confidence. So first and foremost, judgy McJudge judges out there, <laughs> be curious and not judgmental. Be curious about why something might be the way that it is instead of immediately judging it. When we're afraid, when something is um, causes fear inside of us, uh, that's when we judge. So it's a projection of our own inner critic, um, Gertrude. We all know about Gertrude. Or a fear of failure onto um, something or someone else. So if I don't like that, it's making me actually have some, have, I'm having an internal conversation with myself. And so instead of owning that, 
I'm projecting it out on you. I'm going to make you wear that. I'm going to make all of this be about you and not about me. And, um, and that's not really accomplishing anything in the end. It's not moving things forward. It's not moving a relationship forward. It's not moving a project forward. It's not moving society forward. It's just you being judgmental. And so we, we don't want to do that. So when we are curious about a person or a situation, it invites us actually to be creative. And creative about solutions, not just about complaining about it or fussing about it. When you're curious about something, you just kind of hold it out here and you're like, oh, what's going on over there? I wonder, I wonder why it's doing that. I wonder, I wonder why that is the way that it is. I wonder what happened that made it that way. I wonder why it's doing that because maybe it has something in the future it's considering. And so when we're curious, then we can start problem solving. We can start coming up with solutions. And, and that problem solving energy is like high energy. And that condescending or that fearful energy, that's like low energy. So you know, you know how that is. Like when you're when you're creating and you're in that creative space and you're thinking about problem solving, that's like when you feel good. And when you're just right, 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 right all the time, that's low energy. You don't feel good about yourself or really anything in your life. So keep that in mind. Um, Brene Brown, some people love her, some people don't. Um, I have mad amount of respect for her. I think she's a very curious woman. Um, even with some of the things that she recently did um, regarding um, her podcast and whether she's going to film it or, or keep going and, and whatnot from um, Spotify because of all the controversy there, you know, it's interesting how she said that she was putting a pause on it and people started judging her for that. She didn't say I'm standing up against them. She didn't say anything. She just said she's going to put a pause on it because she was going to be curious. She needed to ask questions. She needed to understand what was going on, but she didn't really owe anybody that on the front end. She needed to go do her due diligence. So anyways, that's my take on Brene Brown. Um, there's nothing, this is from, this is a quote from Brene. There's nothing more vulnerable than creativity. It's not about winning. It's not about losing. It's about showing up and being seen. You know, I'm all about, I see you. That's what I'm all about. That's what branding is all about. It's about being seen for who we actually are, whether that's a personal brand, an employer brand, or a business brand. And so I want you to think about that. When you routinely express creativity, you will feel confident because you know you can always eventually find solutions, right? You might not find it the first go, but you can find it the next go. Um, or maybe, maybe you have to try three or four different tactics, if you will, before you get to your solution. Um, and then also you'll be, you'll be known and you'll be respected for your unbiased approach to relationships and projects, which will actually further increase your confidence because people are like, oh, good job. I know I can count on you. And so that external feedback will help strengthen the internal words and feelings that you're having. And when all that kind of comes together in a blender, then we're going to build our confidence. So the next time I don't know, there's a Super Bowl halftime that you don't like and you start being judgy, make judgy about it. Think about like, be a little more curious, be a little more curious about why somebody who, I don't know, grew up in the hood and had everything going against them and have been sexually assaulted and abused and neglected and how they might have created a better life for themselves and for everybody around them and brought other people up with them? And why is it that that reflection of reality that you might not know anything about, because maybe you don't know anything about what it would be like to live in the hood where gangs and violence and um, overt sexuality is just part of your everyday. And it has been since you were old enough to like speak. What if art is a reflection of humanity and society? What if they took their art and they reflected back their realities. And so many people connected with that message. So many people connected with them reflecting that art back that it created an entire genre of music. And then when you look at all those people standing in the middle of the Super Bowl who've made it and brought so many people along with them, why are you going to judge that? Why are you going to judge? Maybe they, maybe they do things differently than you, but you know what, what I saw Super Bowl halftime, 
was some pretty bad mamma jammas. And you know what word I really want to say, but I'm not because your kids might be in the car. <laughs> some pretty bad mamma jammas who overcame so much to get to where they are and who have put such a fingerprint on society despite having everything going against them growing up. Y'all, Mary J. Blige, my girl, first of all, my last house was literally called the Hurdle Hizzle. Okay, Snoop Dogg might have a little bit of influence in my life. My one of my welcome mats on the on the back of the house it says um, "Bless this hizzle for shizzle." Okay, like <laughs> I love me some Snoop Dogg. I love Dre. I love um, Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige like got me through some of the most horrible seasons of my life because I would listen to her and I'd listen to her edifying music, and she was reflecting back her reality which I related to because I knew how much she had to overcome to get to where she was. And I knew how much I had to overcome to get to where I wanted to go. So just being curious, like instead of being like, oh, they're ruining society and I can't believe it's so vulgar or whatever, whatever you're thinking in your mind, I want you to take a big step back and I'm not judging you. I'm, I'm asking you to be curious. I'm asking you to take a giant step back. And, and then most of my listeners are like, what are you talking about? I dropped it like a spot <laughs> because... <laughs> Most of my listeners are about that age where that was our upbringing. Um, that was our music that we got down to. So, but if if that's not you, whether it was a Super Bowl halftime or anything in life, I just want you to take a big step back and I want you to look at it. And I want you to think about like, why is it that way? Why is that person at work so cranky all the time? You know, I'm, I'm curious what's going on in their life. You know, for all you know, their spouse could be dying of cancer. Like you just don't know. And I'm not excusing bad behavior, but I would just invite you to be curious and not judgmental. And when you start to do that, you're going to flex that confidence muscle because you're not projecting all the junk that's going on inside of you onto other people. And it helps you actually be able to process the world around you where you can confidently move about without like having all of your, your walls up and, uh, and it gives you the ability to be at that high level energy of creativity, problem solving solutions, right? And so that low energy of um, being judgy. Okay. So uh, the other thing that I want you to practice and consider is to stop taking things personally. <laughs> I mean, I have to flex this muscle myself sometimes because sometimes people, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, Facebook calls me a public figure. I think that's kind of ridiculous. I'm like, oh, I'm just a speaker and a podcaster. I, so I wrote a book, but like to you, that might be a big deal. But in my world, it's like, oh, you've only written one book. Like that's, My friends have written like seven books, right? So um, I just think it's funny. But um, even as that person, the minute I take the stage, I'm judged by literally every single person in that room, hundreds of people immediately start judging me. When I open my mouth, they judge me some more. When I finish up, they've judged whether I did a good job, whether I inspired them, whether I gave them the education, whether they could follow along. I'm being judged. And I mean, honestly, I'm judged a lot in my personal life too. Very different than a lot of the people that I'm around um, in my area. And, and so there's a lot of judgment there. But what I've learned is that if you just don't take things personally and you understand that that their behavior, their reaction, their judgment is, is kind of, I mean, we just talked about this. That it's a reflection of what's going on inside of them. It's a reflection of what their life is about. Okay. So um, Don Miguel Ruiz, I hope I said that right, um, wrote a book called The Four Agreements. And my therapist had me read this forever ago. Uh, my bombshells read this. We, we talk about it in uh, the Velvet Machete Leadership Academy. And um, the book is amazing because that's one of the four agreements that you have to, that you have to have with yourself. So Google it, get the book. It's great. It just really helps you with perspective. But um, whenever anyone, whatever anyone else says or does is a reflection of their own perception of the world. So like their background, their history, whatever that is, um, is through their lens, through their life experiences, whatever's going on in their life, their values, their desires, and it has nothing to do with you personally. Okay. So I was just hanging, um, the other day with my friend and, um, she is, she's from Quebec and French speaking French, uh, heritage, 
I am here and, you know, I, I grew up in the United States and, and I said something, um, what was it? Cause I talked about this on, uh, the speaking engagement I did that she was at. Um, oh, I said, oh, well, that person's squirrely. And, and I didn't mean it in a negative way. I just meant like it, things can get squirrely because it can just get a little all over the place. And she was like, squirrely, I don't understand that. And I was like, oh, okay. You know how like a squirrel like jumps from one tree to another and, you know, and then they get their acorn and then they're running around or whatever. Like I had to give her the context of what I was talking about because she came from a different background than me and did not understand the term. Now she speaks fluent English. She's, you know, the, but I've found with all of my international friends that there's sometimes, shoot, it happens whether I'm in the South or I'm Southern California. I mean, it could be New York versus Texas. I mean, we don't all use the same vernacular, right? So the way that I expressed myself came from my background and I had to slow down and explain it to her so that she could understand what it was that I was trying to say. So if we, if we come with such differences and such tiny little ways like that, where we're not necessarily using the same slang or the same, um, um, just like kind of cultural references, why are we getting all hung up? If somebody does something to us, when we don't know what their background is, we don't know where they came from. We don't know what their understanding of life is. We don't know what their values are and we're letting it get underneath our skin. Like just don't take it personally. It's not about you. It is not about you. Uh, I think of that song, You're So Vain. I bet you think the song is about you. <laughs> like, go through life with that in the back of your mind because most people who are ugly to you or whatever, um, it's not a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of who they are. And let me tell you what, I have had to remind myself of that over and over and over again the past couple of years, just repeatedly, like, that's it's not this isn't about you this is not about you this is about them and um and really having to let go of needing to be the star of their dysfunction show <laughs> like why do we want to be the star of somebody's dysfunction show or the star of their trauma show or the star of their i just don't want to you know improve upon my life show whatever that is you let them hold on to that and then you hold on to what you know and what you know is right and what you believe to be true about your life. And then guess what happens? Your confidence increases because you're not worried about everybody out there and what they think about you and what they're saying about you, what their behavior means. If, if, if they make a choice, it's not about you. So you can just kind of remove yourself. I'm not saying that we completely negate responsibility. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is if we don't take things personally, then we don't have um, as much of a struggle in life and we don't let allow our, our confidence to um, diminish. So um, the faster you can understand this, the faster your confidence will grow. And I'll just say, when I start to take things personally, I have to remind myself that the world does not revolve around me. It does not, it does not, it does not, it does not. And why that person did or said that or whatever decision they made, whatever was behind that decision had everything to do with their world and nothing to do with mine. So I just want you to remember that. Like, I want you to recognize that whether it's a situation with a peer, a loved one, a boss, an employee, a customer, a vendor, literally anyone, we can take our power back. We do not have to bend and respond emotionally to matters that truly don't involve us at all, okay? We can continuously command confidence if we stop thinking the world revolves around us, okay? And that's kind of crazy because you're like, oh, well, wouldn't we want the world to revolve around us and we'd be super confident? No, that's not how it works. That That's such a burden, okay? So you let people do them and then you do you. And then as they're doing that, don't be judgmental. And then also don't take it personally. Okay. So we're not going to judge them for wherever they're coming from or wherever their insight is. And listen, I know that's hard, but then on top of just not judging them, then we also don't want to take it personally. And I'll tell you what happens um, frequently is when we stop taking things personally, then we have this weird thing inside of us that just like snarls up and we're like, okay, well now I'm going to judge you in order for me to not take this personally. Now I'm going to think poorly of you for even thinking that to begin with. Like it just needs to be net neutral. Okay. It just needs to be neutral. I'm not going to take it personally and I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to let you go do you over there. And then I'm going to keep doing me over here, not judging you, 
not owning your behavior, not owning your decisions. And then like, you just get to go along in life. Okay. And if you find your, if you find yourself around people that you're really compelled to judge or that you're constantly feeling like it's about you, this, you know, that's when you need to go back and, um, watch my video, uh, on YouTube. I think it's, um, you know, creating people environments. Okay. So that's something to think of as well. Um, are you around the right people? If you feel constantly compelled to either judge them, or if you feel compelled to um, take it personally, and then, you know, there's, there's some work you might need to do there for yourself. So the other thing, if we're not judging, if we're not taking things personally, then um, what we do is we, we, we dial down our volume. Like volume all the way up, Amber. Ooh, she's a lot. You know, I say this all the time. If I'm too much, you better go find less. If I'm too much, cool, go find less. Go find whatever it is that you need because I'm not dialing my volume down for you. I'm not like, this is, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God designed me to be this way and to be loud with my life, to be a light. I mean, even the Bible says, don't hide your light under a bushel. We sang that song in, in school. Okay. So we cannot play small. Um, and I'm, I'm going to read an excerpt from my book, the bombshell Businesswoman: how to become a bold, brave, confident female, a bold, brave, confident female entrepreneur. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. But even if you're not an entrepreneur, I mean, they've done this book and book studies in corporate America. So, you know, I'm just saying I wrote it in the voice for that particular audience. So buckle up, sis. This might get a little emotional for you. This is coming from my book. And people are going to try to stop you because your success makes underachievers come face to face with their own inadequacies and sorry little lives. Okay, that might have been a little judgmental. <laughs> that has created an epidemic in this world where people simply don't feel empowered or confident enough to step into their greatness and play big in life. That's why I hear women say things like, I didn't say anything in the meeting because I didn't want to be the dissenting voice, or I would step up and help lead but I don't want to step on John's toes or I wanted to get out there and dance, but I didn't want to cause attention to myself. And my only natural response to that is, huh? Let me flip the script here and ask questions in return. What if other people thought the same thing as you, but were also too afraid to speak up and the end result was that everyone left agreeing to something only one person believed in? What if John desperately needs help, but doesn't know how to ask? Or what if you stepped in and your collaboration was transformational? What if by you going out on the dance floor, it broke the ice for everyone else at the party to do the same? What if fun was possible for all with your first dance? Well, that nonsense talk ends now. You are now a bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident fempreneur, and that authority is going to spill over into all areas of your life. And I don't know how a short, redheaded, pale complected, freckle faced ADD dreamer managed to grow up with such acceptance of myself. I'm not sure how being a highly visible leader in my high school only to end up knocked up at 16 years old didn't disarm me, but instead fueled my mission further. I wish I could come up with some recipe because I could make millions selling it. I guess what I can boil it down to is my deeply embedded belief in the bolded phrases and the prominently displayed wall decal I have in my intro entryway featuring an excerpt from Marion Williamson's A Return to Love, Reflections of the Principles of A Course in Miracles. Your playing small does not serve the world. By not stepping into your greatness, you are letting down everyone around you who can inspire or who you can inspire, touch or influence. You see, it's not really about you. It's about everyone around you. So dish the guilt and insecurity you have about standing out. How dare you not? Much to the confusion of small-minded people, confidence does not equate arrogance. And if you don't believe me, look those two words up in the dictionary. Um, oh, wait, y'all go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so as we're thinking about that, there's three things that we need to do to flex our confidence muscles. And the first one is be curious, not judgmental. 
The second one is to stop taking things personally. And the third one is to remember that your playing small does not serve the world. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about what person or situation you need to get curious about. What have you been judgy McJudge judge about and it has not served you? Okay, what do you need to get curious about? And then I want you to think about what details you don't have to help you make decisions. So while we're being curious, we're like, okay, let me just think about this. What details do I need in order to get that big picture to help me make a decision? And then how can you frame the situation differently to approach it with curiosity and not judgment? How can you look at things differently? So instead of saying like, oh, you know, Bob is a tool, how can you look at it and say, I wonder what's going on with Bob right now? I wonder if he's under a lot of stress right now, whatever that looks like, okay? How can you frame the situation differently to approach it so you can have curiosity and not judgment? And then what creative solutions do you have to resolve the problem? I want you to start getting creative. Now, I'm not going to give you homework in all of these different sections. I really, I think the judgment piece right now is a lot because there's a lot going on in the country. There's politics, there's um, health issues, there's, um, you know, there's just a lot. And so I, I really want you to think about that. So what person or situation do you need to get curious about? What details do you not have to help you make a decision? And how can you frame that situation differently to approach it with curiosity and not judgment? And then what creative solutions do you have um, or could you create in order to resolve the problem? Okay, that's your homework for this week. Hit me up, amber at amberherald.com. Let me know what you're being curious about, okay? And you can find all of this in the show notes at amberherdle.com forward slash podcast with an S and just look for the title of this episode or you can find it on any of the podcasting listening apps. And if you would like to do us a big favor and your fellow bombshells a favor, then leave us a rating and review, whether you're um, on Apple or wherever you listen to this, it's really important because the higher our ratings are and the more like detail you can give in your review, the more people are going to be like, oh yeah, okay, cool. This is for me. And my mission, our mission at Amber Hill Consulting is, is empowerment and business mastery. Yeah. We want to give you business acumen. Yeah. We want you to feel really confident in your life as a professional woman, but we can't get there if we don't have the empowerment piece. And if all we're doing is going around being feeling empowered all the time, and we're not actually GSDing, then that's not really a good balance either. So um, I just want to thank you so much. I'm on the road. You can tell I'm in a hotel room. <laughs> I'm on the road. And, um, and I just felt like this was on my heart. I had different plans for this week, but this was what I decided to do. So thank you for your listenership. Thank you for hanging in there with me through so many different seasons of bombshell and and even personal seasons of my life. And I hope that this um, episode blesses you and perhaps maybe blesses somebody else. I encourage you to share it with whoever you think. Don't share it like you're being judgy. Don't share it with somebody that you think needs to do this side and the other. Don't be prescriptive about it. Be helpful about it. Okay. And just know too, like, Hey, I'm not perfect. I have to practice these things myself. I have to eat my own cookies and, um, and I have to flex my confidence muscles too. So we got to tell Gertrude to shut up, move forward with life, be the bombshells that we are. And, um, don't forget to check out all the, uh, advances with Jean's new house. And if you haven't given, then we'll put that, um, link or those links in the show notes. We have one that might be wrapping up in Facebook and then we have a GoFundMe as well. And we would just cherish your, your support of Jean so that she could have a safe, and um, happy place for her family to live um, for years to come. Love you guys. See you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit amberhurdle.com for more resources like show notes and check out the bombshellbusinesswoman.com to grab my book and download the free bonuses.